valuable to all of us, right? We only know that we are willing to be professional, but this is the first time these two keywords come up. They teach you how to make more money. And uh, we have a very good student, also George is here. Um, I wanted to thank all of our customers, especially you too. And George came for one week, and now he stayed one more week, and then he stayed one more week. <laughs> you know, as you, we are tired, but you know why he stayed? Have you thought about this question? He planned here for four days only, before he came here. I think you see our teamwork. Yes. You service yes. You say sorry. We didn't even consider it as a service, but I think we all made a nice teamwork. This is what we do every day. We didn't. But I think we are different. We are different. The, the sales team, they're young sales, like when you say they're older sales. So um, the older sales, they're working. We didn't even consider it as a service because we do that every day. This is how we treat every customer. 我觉得这个东西是我们是很很要紧的，对吧？就是，但是这个 Jordy 来这儿的话，我觉得最主要是他看到我们特别专业。And uh, the the purchase team is working on it. Tommy and uh, Vincent, the, they're shopping all these uh, nice slabs. And the, the design team, they are doing all the shop drawings, right? So I think professional, professional. This is what I always say, professional. But how do you, how can you be professional, 对吧？ To be professional, first you have to love what you do. You have to have a patient. You have to learn to love, because this is how you make money. Like Mike said, would you that today Mike give us a very good conclusion? I always tell them to be professional, but I didn't know how to be professional. If they don't like the job, they cannot. They cannot be professional. If they don't have a patient, you cannot be professional. And also another very important. This is what we write here. Okay, it's the, the value of the company. What we believe in. We wanted to create value for the customer, and we want our employee to have a better life. And we say, um, customer is our center, 对吧？这个就是这个就是 commitment. You have to feel responsibility. They come from a very very far far away, and they have billions of many many hundreds. Like what he said, 200 people. Like us, but why do they choose only PFM? Love me. Because he feel responsibility, commitment from Sylvia. George feel our commitment. We wanted to do a good job. Okay, this commitment is so important. 是不是这样子的？所以，首先在我们这儿工作，没有责任心的人是在这儿待不住的，在这儿没有这种感觉。我们一直不知道是什么东西，我觉得他今天总结的非常到位，因为这个东西才能让我们赚钱啊，对吧 ？How can you grab the customer? The customer is afraid to lose you. He has to keep listening to what you have to say. Then you have to be professional. Then you have to learn from the factory, from the older sales, from whoever, right? We learn from. I learn a lot from George. I learn a lot from Mike. They gave me a lot of nice idea. I'm gonna use that. George told me to find a good designer from the very good university, even a young person. I'm doing that. I already arranged. I have to find somebody who's able to speak English because I'm too busy. I have to find somebody who's able to handle all of these ideas to communicate, right? 我觉得这都是很好的建议。刚才麦克给我们的这个销售课是不是特别特别好？大家记得一定要学会，而且要特别感谢他们。Okay, I write down many, many, many keywords, and we have to review again. Okay, and uh, let's um, question, question, ma. No problem. I just want to know how is the situation? What about the situation when the salary is higher? You say you got some problem about doing with the higher, and what is the problem? Well, I'm sorry, start over again. Can you hear me? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, have a client for it. Yes. Canadian. Get some problem with us. Yeah. Communicate. Sorry, more than. But um, I just want to know what is the point? Um, 就是就是这个要点。就是为什么失败了是吗？对，就
and you are teaching in English. Yeah. It's nice to improve your English. You have to try to speak English. He wanted to ask okay, the reason why the client didn't write us. What okay. the reason we failed? Let me stop in that. Okay. So number one, I understand that there are some back to the language. Thing. I understand there are some concepts, culturally based concepts that. Chinese culture, every culture, but we're talking about Chinese. They're really, really difficult to, even if you can do perfect translation. I, I learned this because when I do my translations on WeChat or Google, I, there's sometimes, sometimes there's very big gaps in the information. But, so I get sometimes that it's just necessary to communicate in Chinese on the big some points, at least to your colleagues. But, so I believe this is what happened. Um, we were pushing too quickly into the design. Um, Sally had, had started the process and she was going in deep and the, the client was asking for design proposals. And personally, I never give design proposals without fairly extensive conversation with lot, lots of con conversation with the client so that I understand really what it is we, they want me to provide. So number one, we did not understand clearly what he wanted in the way of a design. Therefore, we were, we were dead right dead. I mean, at that point, not understanding what the client wanted, how could we provide him with a service? So we didn't spend enough time, and, and I'm gonna offer this to you, because I offered it to Sally, and Sandra and, and others. Um, if you ever reach a situation, especially when you're communicating an email, and you have a client, specifically in North America, because we actually lost two clients, and one of them, by the way, I've reopened communication. I'm on WhatsApp with him, I'm trying to pull him back in for you guys, the little bar thing in Texas. Um, and so, um, the, we moved too quickly on that, didn't have a clear understanding of what he wanted, and we didn't put our, present our package properly, and so our numbers were way off. It just, it, they just weren't even close. We had uh, a number, of, a price to provide design service for one little part of the house that was this, which was actually probably a pretty reasonable price, and then we had another extreme price for doing the whole package. And the reason that number seemed so big to him, well, it wasn't big, but the reason it seemed so big to him was because we had started with this smaller package. And, and what we should have done to control the client, it's exactly what you're doing with your Lumini project. That's the Lumini. Yeah, Lumini. Um, is do a small part of it. Hey, Mr. Customer, let us do a small section over here. Because that does two things. It keeps his commitment low. Because one of the things that that I wanted to share, but I believe was less important than this, is the fear factor that people have, most people have a fear factor in doing business with China, and it's mostly a fear of the unknown. Again, it's um, how am I going to communicate? I'm going to send all my money over there before I ever even see the product. You know, that's a very scary thing. I mean, believe me, it's very scary. I've done it a couple times. And so, and, and it's the other reason, it's the other advantage that your operation has, your company has, because you now have credibility, you have strength and size, you're not just some dusty little office somewhere. Um, so you have a reputation already built and in place, and you can leverage that, so you take away some of that fear factor. But um, again, in, in, in the future, on any of these little projects, um, just get with Susan or Sandra, um, and you can bring me in and say, hey, Mike, this is the communication process. How would you advise us to move forward? And I'm more than happy to do it. But back to Sally's, we should have insisted on doing a small, simple design for him, build his confidence, build your credibility in his eyes. And I actually researched the guy. I, I, the guy's imported recliners. As soon as, you know, we may as well use technology when we have it. As soon as I saw that guy's name, I said, okay, let me find out who this guy is as a client. 
Is he a big CEO of a big company? Or is he a little simple homeowner that's just trying to build his dream home? That changes how you deal with it. And so it turns out he's some kind of business owner. He's bought personal products for himself. I can tell they're not products that he's bought to resell. Like I said, he bought a recliner, sofa, and some things like that. Because all of that shows up on the internet searches because that has to be put in when it's imported into Canada or the United States. That all goes into a database in public. But um, again, we should have done a little design, made him happy, made him excited. He goes home, he shows his wife, honey, look what our four-year floor is going to look like. This is beautiful, this is amazing. And she would say, but honey, you just spent $2,000 designing it. He says, yeah, but look what we're going to get now. And so see, so you have to realize that sometimes there's other decision makers. And in my world, there's always other decision makers. And I, I always have to be sensitive that everybody is on the same page. And so George, there's other decision makers on his project. So that's why it's so important for him to have a good team behind him because his decision makers are counting on him. And if you make, if you do a bad job, it doesn't make the client look bad, it makes George look bad. And so, you know, that's, that's part of the process of developing. And, and again, those are small projects, but those are perfect projects to learn from because the losses aren't great. I mean, we hated to lose the little bar in Texas, but you know, it, it wasn't that big of a project. It's probably a pain in the ass project. You know, I mean, it, who knows if, how profitable it would have even been. But those are the projects you want. You want to chase every little project, especially when you're new to sales. You want to chase every little project because that's how you test your sales skills. I know this is a little project, but I want this because I want to see success. And you learn, you develop sales skills equally well on a little project as you do on a very, very big project. And so that's why you want to treat every project, you know, and, and go after it and, and challenge yourself. I don't want to lose this guy. More than I think, and uh, I'll always be available to help you guys. Again, my best assistance is going to be with North American clients because that's what I know. But a lot of the stuff I apply, you know, a lot of stuff I do applies to other, you know, cultures and other countries. So I'm willing to give that a shot. I think this is an international passion and commitment. That, not, absolutely. Not, not only North America. Global. Uh, yeah, it's global. Because what we use in China, this is how we are working with international people. So I think I think might say that is um, you have to study your customer before you do anything. And try to start with small, right? Small. And also to uh, the I think there's one thing that Mike mentioned was very important is a positive energy environment. When you walk into a place, you feel the environment, you feel the energy. If there is a bad place, you feel you don't want to stay there. But if it's a nice place, everybody's smiling, right? Everybody's trying to help each other, working together, teamwork. And you feel like, okay, this is a place that I can trust. This is important, right? A lot of people told me that. And uh, if you walk into an office and everybody hates each other, <laughs> you run away. People will run away. Everybody run away. There will be no people work here. And this is this is the energy I'm trying to build up. I always say we need teamwork, right? I know that before, you know, before we have this uh, uh, commission, the best on sales, but it's like everybody work individually. But more and more, we need to work together. This is very important. The purchase needs to work with you. The designer needs to work with you. The quality control needs to work with you. I need to work with you. Everybody's working together. Even Mike today is working with us. He's teaching us. I think this is very important. It's very important for us, right? Okay. Well, one, so one more little thing I want to share because I, I, I make the assumption um, that it's clear to you guys 
where, forget about China as a whole, let's just talk about our little group here, where you are positioned in the global economy right now. Um, it's very important for you to recognize that and benefit from it because the um, 20 years ago in China, a lot of product was being shipped out. It was substandard, toxic, poor quality, money disappearing. It was you know, horrible, horrible to deal with 20, 30 years ago in China. Now, you have um, a situation where I was very impressed. I have been discussing with clients coming to China for 20 years. Let's go to China and buy a bunch of cheap products and save money on our house. And we could never justify it because the smaller homes, you can't justify the expense of coming here and running all over China looking for this stuff. And you have no clue. I'm actually doing some video. I'm going to do a YouTube channel with some videos showing exactly what this process is for someone like me to come over here because it's kind of crazy. And if, if you're here to accomplish something special, if you're coming over to buy a bunch of little things and run back home and pretend you save money, then that's a different thing. But it's really hard to truly create this mechanism that allows you to get good products and save money. But I actually don't come over here to buy cheap products and go sell them in the US cheap or give them to my clients cheap. I've come to learn that where my advantages are is the, the opportunities in China are for me to do very, very special things for my clients in an affordable way because I can't do things over there that I can do here. I had a project, I was doing a custom concrete cast bathtub. The mold was going to cost 12,000 US dollars. The casting of the bathtub was going to cost 10,000 US dollars. 20,000 US dollars. I come to China to work on my other things and because I'm always grasping and learning and I have a thirst for knowledge every day. I consume large quantities of information on the internet every day. I'm a news hound, I'm an information freak, I want to know the latest and greatest technology, what's going on, what's coming, what's gone. And so I come here and I'm just devouring information and I'm running all over the place and everyone's exhausted and I'm driving my driver crazy and my translator crazy, but um, long, long days. But the the um, the opportunity, uh, so so for me the opportunity is doing, so, I, so I, I discover, I was looking, I was in actually Ceramic City, looking at ceramic tiles, glass mosaic tiles actually for a dome I was doing. And I saw this solid surface material bathtub. It was really nice and slick. And I said, hey, I want to make a custom tub. I want to do a big, beautiful custom tub. And he said, oh, you don't want to do that. It costs two. He goes, how many do you need? What's your quantity? I said, one. He goes, no, 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 no. The mold will cost too much. You can't justify that. I said, how much is the mold? And he said, $2,000. $2,000 in the US is 12000 I said, well, how much to cast the tub? 2000 for the mold and 2000 for the tub. $4,000 for a better tub than I could have done in the United States for $22,000. I mean, so the opportunities there are amazing. So now, globally, everyone understands that this phone is an iPhone. Whether you like Apple or Android is not the point. No one argues that the Apple, the iPhone, is the highest quality made product in the world, and it's made two hours from here. It's made here in China. If China can produce this, then China can produce anything else at a high level of quality. And so now the world is understanding this. The world is understanding that there's companies like this now that you can do business with reliably send them tens of thousands of dollars, it won't disappear. So now you have an opportunity that you're gonna, you have a lot of attention. Regardless of how your economy fluctuates, and I'm talking about in your career lifetime, over the next 20 years, 
regardless of what the economy does, in China, it's going to be going like this. There might be some years where it goes up and down. So now, unlike anyone else on this planet, the people in this room are positioned to take advantage of a huge, huge opportunity. And so the, re the reason I come so often is because this creates an opportunity for me to do very special things in the United States. And the same opportunity it creates for me, it's creating 10 times the opportunity for you. So I hope you recognize that. Because over time, that'll change. As, as China starts growing and developing, and the middle class starts growing, your costs go up. Already things are starting to be made in Vietnam that you guys used to make, because it's cheaper. But for 20 years, you guys are in the golden age. And you know, go get them. Quality products. The first question you ask: Do you know iPhone? Do you use iPhone? You know, it's two hours from here. Our, com our company is two hours from here. Yes. From <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 还有另外一个就是他说的客户的相信问题，对不对 ？Trust. You come from Doha. If I never met you, never would place this order with us, right? It's trust. It's respect. It's how professional. It's how is your company? How you build up this? This image that you will not run away and you will not give a bad product and you will have commitment. Thank you for everybody's time. Mike, thank you so much. It's really very, very good class. We all need we all need all uh, this and class. And thank you guys for making my project successful too. I, I know only a small part of your company has done that so far. No, you have but done so much. We've got so much more coming. It's all part of your culture that's made my stuff successful. 那我们要感谢他，好吗？欢迎。